with Annie Dumoulin. Good evening and welcome to episode 408 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzaman Dongwa Kumalo. It's the last live show of the Private Property Podcast for 2021. Tomorrow's show, we have taped it. We're ready and good to go. And you're going to catch in on the fun tomorrow evening on what promises to be one of the best shows that we have done this year. So do make sure that you are uh, ready. You've set those alarms for tomorrow show you're going to get a snapshot of all the presenters uh, during the show and of course some of the lucky super fans who got to uh, certainly spend some time with us and join in on the festivities on the show but we're wrapping up 2021 on quite a great note right here on the private property podcast and before i talk about some of what you can expect on the show you know that of course you can watch us across different social media platforms uh, that is on facebook for those of you who are watching us on facebook continue sending those green hearts and sending us some love. Uh, we're on Instagram, we're on uh, YouTube, as well as, of course, the other social media platforms where we share informative content on all things relating to property. I'm talking LinkedIn, TikTok, uh, some of the platforms that we are on. And, of course, you can also catch our incredible other shows on our social media platforms every single weekday at 8 p.m. As it is, What day of the week is it? I mean, I'm even losing track on what day of the week it is. It is a Tuesday. And so as it is a Tuesday later on, I think Badunog will be wrapping up with the last show that she's also going to be having uh, on the show. So a lot of changes are happening this festive season. As many of you know, many of us winding down. Unfortunately, there's still a few of us who are still sending kind regards emails uh, because we haven't quite wrapped up. When I find out from you at home, are you still working uh, or going to be taking some time off this festive season? Or are you one of those people so I send out all kind regards and you are just, uh, you know, watching everybody's stories on Instagram with envy. They are already, you know, sipping cocktails and, uh, of course, a mimosa without orange juice and they're swimming pools and you also want to join in on the fun. Well, talking about the fun, we, of course, going to tackle something that I know so many of you at home uh, certainly want to be able to get, get a good sense of, especially if you're going to be buying a property in the new year. But before we get to that, we're going to be announcing the lucky winner later on the show of the competition that we have been running. That's the last winner for 2021, where we had been asking you around some property advice that you had picked up while watching the show. And we're going to be doing that halfway through the show. Of course, the rules are still the same. Uh, if you call your name, drop us a text and the money in the money bag is all yours. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do if the winner isn't watching, you know, because we obviously won't be having a rollover. Uh, we'll see if maybe we won't give it to a lucky winner who is commenting and watching us this evening. My colleague will let me know how much we've got in the money bag. Uh, I think I'll feel festive if by the end of the show the winner hasn't claimed the prize. Whoever sends the most comments and engages us the most this evening will take the money in the money bag. The team doesn't know this. They're probably watching and thinking, oh my word, there she goes giving away money. But that's what we're going to do this festive season. Well, this evening we're looking at preparing to purchase a new home and I'm joined by Neil McKinnon, who's an attorney at Hammond Paul Attorneys. Neil, good evening and thank you so much for joining us on the show. Hi, Zama. Good evening to you. Thank you for having me and uh, good evening to your, uh, to your viewers as well. It's such a pleasure to have you on the show, Neil. First time with us, also wrapping up the year with us uh, in 2021. And I think wrapping up the year on a topic that so many people always need a refresher on, because this is also something that, uh, you know, is obviously going to be applicable, uh, even if you've bought a first home before. So it isn't just first time home buyers. I think those are also repeat buyers always need to touch up a little bit on some of their property knowledge and insight when it comes to buying that new home. And I think before we even get into some of the you know clauses one would typically find in uh, you know, an offer to purchase and certainly the key ones that we always have to be uh, mindful of. Let's look at the sort of the basics of the home buying process that we always just need to know and bear in mind because I think people still trip over, uh, you know, the, the very basics. And I get, uh, you know, DMs, calls, emails quite regularly around, this is what's happening, you know, in the process. Is this what's supposed to happen? And nine out of 10 times, it's part of the process. It's very normal. It is indeed something that is meant to be happening. But of course, not everybody is aware of what even those basics fundamentally are. I mean, yeah, thanks. I think um, first and foremost, you know, uh, buyers that are anticipating entering the property market and particularly first-time home buyers, it's a good idea um, just to have a pre-approval 
uh, to investigate first and foremost how much they can afford um, and to consider things like uh, additional fees like rates, uh, levies if they're buying in a complex and uh, with, with an estate, homeowners association. Um, and then, of course, costs and transfer duty, you know, if they're buying a property that's, that's valued at more than a million rand. So, uh, you know, buyers should just consider that to start with. Essentially, in terms of getting into the process, um, once the buyer has been pre-approved and uh, they've gone to identify a property that they think they can afford and they've put in an offer, they'll obviously do that through a, a real estate agent that would have introduced them to the property. Um, they would have made an offer. The seller would have a certain op uh, period of time in which to accept that offer. Once the offer is accepted, uh, the seller typically nominates uh, an attorney and normally guided by the real estate agent uh, in terms of which attorney to use. Of course, the seller does have his own uh, choice. Uh, it's the seller's prerogative at the end of the day. Uh, once uh, the offer has been accepted and the seller has identified an attorney, that would be uh, a channel through to a, a conveyancer to handle. Once it reaches the conveyancer, uh, the conveyancer would then have a look at what are the suspensive conditions uh, that need to be fulfilled. And the suspensive conditions would be, you know, the payment of a deposit, the sale of another property, and uh, one of the biggest um, suspensive conditions, of course, the obtaining of a home loan. The buyer would have a certain amount of time in which to fulfill those suspensive conditions. Once those conditions are fulfilled, um, the uh, process can continue. Uh, during that period, the attorney would uh, typically contact the seller's existing bank if there's an existing bond over the property, and they would call uh, for cancellation figures, essentially asking what is the uh, amount required to cancel the seller's uh, existing bond. By the time they've got those cancellation figures, hopefully the uh, purchaser's bond or home loan would have been granted. And at that stage, uh, they can start calling for guarantees. Um, and uh, the bond attorney that's appointed by the bank, uh, if, if the buyer is going to be bonding the property, uh, would communicate with the conveyancing attorney, with the transfer attorney, and, uh, and request them what is their guarantee requirements. Uh, those guarantee requirements will obviously be the amount that's required to settle uh, the seller's bond and uh, pay the balance of the purchase price. Once that's done, uh, the transferring attorney would then uh, call for clearance figures from the municipality and from uh, the homeowners association. Those clearance figures uh, need to be paid by the seller. They need to be paid in advance and uh, those are required, obviously, to carry on with the with the transfer process. Uh, certificates would be required by the deeds office, a clearance certificate uh, for uh, rates clearances, and if there's a homeowners association or a body corporate, a clearance certificate from the managing agent, that would need to be lodged uh, with the documents. Once those uh, clearance figures have been paid, um, the, uh, uh, the, the attorney can then prepare documents to sign with the parties. Once that's done, uh, it can be lodged at the lead lines, in a nutshell. And, and you know, Neil, I, I think one of the things that I appreciate is you really have painted a very comprehensive picture, a step-by-step -step guide, as it were, of what one would expect. And, and I, I want us to, uh, you know, look at some of those steps that you, you've, you know, pointed out. But before we do that, uh, I see the love that we're getting on this last live show that we're having on the Private Property Podcast with myself, as I'm Antonio Akumalo, Men's Butelezi, sending those green hearts um, and certainly having hashtag 20,000 comments and saying, I'll be sending kind regards to late Thursday. Ah, Menzi, you are me and I am you. I'm also going to be kind regarding until the very tail end of this week. Um, happiness, Martina Malulega, also sending some love. Farina, uh, Fatima, rather, Sadien, uh, Sarah Makleta. Uh, we've got Umatha Shinange saying on that last live show note, let's show some love to the team that has showed us a whole lot of love this year. Let's send stars to private property for all the love, spoils, and lots of prizes. And I absolutely love that comment.
uh, because as much as you can see myself or on Bali shorts and Bali or SD or certainly Chad, there's a whole team uh, behind the scenes that does incredible work in making sure that we look great, we sound great, we bring uh, quality guests onto the show and certainly keep the conversation going on our social media platforms. It's not just us, uh, but certainly a whole host of other incredible team members who make this possible. Uh, teamwork certainly does make the dream work and we've been doing that as a team and we wouldn't have been able to do it, certainly us as a presenters, without the team behind the scenes who make sure that we are able to bring you these shows on a daily basis. So thank you very much to the team. And I'll say my thank yous actually later on uh, on the show when we wrap up. But I see the love. I know that Everton, Glad, Shurinda also watching. And of course, I want to find out from you when you're knocking off work. Did you, you know, stop work uh, last Friday? I'm very envious of the people who already stopped work last Friday. Um, I'm still going to be working probably until the very tail end of this week um there is a possibility i might need to work next week but i'm trying to wrap up um as much as i can uh this end of the week so that next week i can go hiking to my heart's content and not need to be on emails at all I want us to go for a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to be looking at, uh, you know, suspensive clauses because that's still one that trips people over um, quite a bit. We're also going to be looking at those transferring attorneys. Uh, how do you, how can you go about choosing them? Oftentimes, of course, it is the um, the seller who would appoint one. How how do you go about choosing them? Are there any things that you should look out for? And of course, going back to more of your comments and questions. But in the meantime, we're going to see who the lucky winner of the thousand rands that is in their money back and uh, if they don't pick up their hand at the end by the end of the show i'm going to give away this thousand rands to a lucky winner who's watching us now and who's on the comments section so you need to be commenting until the very tail end uh, and between the team and i will choose a lucky winner who walk away with that thousand rands but in the meantime let's see who the lucky winner of the thousand rands that is in the money bag And that lucky winner this evening is Lebuhan Kolotze. Lebuhan Kolotze walking away with a thousand rands in cash. I hope that Lebuhan is indeed watching us. If you are, drop us a message down here below to claim your prize this evening on the Private Property Podcast with myself, as I'm Antonio Kumalo. Thousand rands up for grabs. That is the last time we're wrapping up this competition, this tail end of the year. We're going to bring you a fresh new competition in the new year. So a thousand rand is up for grabs this evening. And as we continue our conversation, looking at preparing to purchase a new home, I'm in conversation with Neil McKinnon, who's an attorney at uh, Hammond Hall Attorneys. And uh, we've got a question coming through from Umenzi Butelezi saying, um, please, can you start from when you, from where you buy land as there are usually no bond registration costs and lower transfer costs when buying cash but what is the process after paying for the land so neil is the process you know really different when we buy land so you're buying land you're buying it in cash so it's not a bonded property um at all so how does the and i already know the answer to this but how does the process then work <laughs> is it different when you are buying land Zama, the transfer process is exactly the same um unless unless they're entering into a land sale agreement uh, where they're buying the property in installments, then it would be uh, an installment sale contract, which would be also registered at the deeds office, um, but to, to preserve the land, you know, so that it could be transferred to the purchaser at a later date. But essentially, the transfer process is exactly the same, except there's no bond registration process. And, and so, Neil, I just want to get that part around if it were an installment sale agreement, uh, would that also be registered in the deeds office and uh, be noted there? Or would it just be the contract between the two parties where they each have a copy of the contract? 
what happens is uh, obviously the disposal of land needs to be in writing to start with. So uh, the, the land sale agreement, if it's in installments, it would have to be in writing uh, between the parties. And what happens is the land needs to be preserved. So you need to, as a buyer, if you're paying installments uh, every month for that uh, property, uh, you want to make sure that the seller is not going to sell it to somebody else that's, that's going to pay up front. So what would happen is that contract would need to be registered at the deeds office um, so that it, it basically it interdicts the sale of the property because there's a contract in place. Mm-hmm. And Neil, I mean, uh, out of, out of, certainly for the benefits of our viewers at home, um, would every type of installment sale agreement and not just that of land, so suppose you're also buying a house or an apartment, uh, would it also you know, sort of work in a similar way where that contract is noted in the deeds um, office so that no other sale could effectively go through um, of that particular property yeah, while Zama, that sale is in, is in the process. Zama, if it deals with, with immovable property, then yes, it would be registered at the deeds office, absolutely. And I think that's an important one because I'm, I'm increasingly seeing, especially property investors, wanting to look at installment sale agreements as you know an alternative way of acquiring investment properties, especially multiple ones. And some of them are doing an installment sale, putting a tenant in place, knowing that they'll be able to uh, essentially buy it using also the tenant's rental. But not everyone understands that it's not just contract between you and the seller and both of you have that copy because it is, as you say you need to be able to also uh so we have it registered in the deeds office because we have unfortunately seen and luckily so i haven't come across many instances but there have been a few where on the one hand there's an installment sale agreement and payment and you're paying on time and you're certainly honoring that aspect of the contract and the seller suddenly wants to you know get somebody who wants to sell uh, i mean certainly wants to buy the property uh, as a cash offer and you've been servicing uh, and certainly meeting the, the the requirements that that are stipulated in your contract so it becomes so crucial for viewers at home to always bear that in mind and that's why we say it's important that you get attorneys involved when you are are you know, doing a property transaction because for the moment somebody says, no, uh, I, I know how this works. We'll just, here's, you know, here's a contract, uh, maybe sign it and, and then we're good to go. Your alarm bells certainly need to be going off because you know that they're probably trying to pull one on you. Yeah, I think uh, you know, the whole purpose of registering the contract at the deeds office is, is to preserve that, uh, that agreement between the buyer and the seller. And if the seller were to uh, were to breach the agreement and now try and sell the property to somebody else, the buyer would be well entitled to approach the court for relief to interdict the sale of that property to somebody else because there's a contract in place. But as I say, that contract has to be registered at the deeds office as a prerequisite. And, and you know, Neil, when we then look at choosing transfer attorneys, what are some of the things that we need to look out for? Because it's one of those things that many of us are not going to be used to. We don't even know, uh, you know, what are some of the questions, if any, we should be asking our transfer attorneys uh, when we kind of interview whether we want to work with them or not. But what are some of the key things that we need to look out for when choosing transferring attorneys? Some, I think it's very important, you know, and that's a great question because, the property transfer process is a complicated, it's a complex uh, um, process. It's not overly complicated, but it has, there's a number of, of areas uh, that can go wrong. And it's very important to make sure that you use a reputable attorney, uh, certainly an attorney that either is a specialist in conveyancing or has a department that specializes in conveyancing. For instance, Hammond Paul attorneys, we've got a, a dedicated department where we employ about 60 people that work in the conveyancing department. And because we're a specialist and we have a dedicated conveyancing department, um, you know, we have a transfer section, we have a bond section, and we have a cancellation section. And I think that's very important to make sure that you're using an attorney that specializes in the property transfer process. And certainly, you know, uh, one of some of the larger firms that uh, that are all around us and that you know are fortunate enough to work with the banks and are on the banks' panels. That's an added benefit as well because they you know they're specialists in the entire process. I, I've seen, um, and I mean no disrespect to to smaller attorneys, but I, I see a lot of attorneys that are not uh, conveyances. They're not specialists in property transfers, but they do handle uh, property transfers from time to time. Um, and I've heard you know some really uh, nightmarish stories 
uh, you know, about those property transfers. So I think make sure that you go, if you are a seller and you are anticipating selling your home, make sure that uh, you've identified a reputable attorney um, and do your homework. You know, check that, uh, do some homework on the attorney and check, you know, uh, if, there's, if there's any uh, um, referrals about that attorney. Mm. Uh, going to your comments and questions this evening on the Private Property Podcast with myself, as I'm doing with Kumalo. As we wrap up the last live show uh, this year, we've got Kulinan Ngos saying, important note, contracts that bind the seller so they cannot sell the property to another party. And that is, of course, with reference to installment sale agreements, regardless of whether you're buying land or, of course, a house or even an apartment, you want to make sure that uh, that contract is registered at the deeds um, office. Utapa Mokobudi is saying, I just love the topic because it's always important to go back and revisit the important points to consider. Sometimes while on the process of purchasing a first home, we get too excited and we miss out on some things that we, uh, that we need that are important. And that's a very big one. And that's exactly why we wanted to end off uh, 2021 on this note because maybe you want to buy your first home in 2022 perhaps you're buying your second or your third but those the first time you did it or the second time you did it uh, you're very excited you're very intimidated of course and may have missed a few things and you really just want to brush up on what you can expect what mistakes to avoid and those sort of things men's is coming back saying please can you also elaborate on the process of registering your apartment for rates with the municipal offices for rates i love this question because i I remember I never direct, I had issues with this and people who watch the show know what issues I'm referring to. So when I bought you know, my first property, I actually bought two properties at the same time. And, and so I was also just overwhelmed because everything was just in doubles, uh, having you know, to, to pay four attorneys because it was all, both properties were bonded. And I didn't know, I was, I bought both properties in a, in a sectional title community. I wasn't aware that I had to pay COJ rates and taxes. I thought I only had to pay levies. And so got the levy, you know, account very easy. I was sent the details. They put me on, they sent the statement the moment they needed to. And I thought, well, there's no such thing as rates and taxes because I don't have a standalone house. Only to get, uh, you know, an SMS saying I'm in areas about three months after the fact. And of course, I am shocked because I'm thinking, but how am I in areas, firstly, because I don't, I didn't even know I needed to pay this. And I didn't know that I had to set it up. And luckily, somebody at COJ, when I called them, they were very helpful. They explained to me what needed to happen. Uh, I was able to do it online because I also wasn't receiving these statements. Uh, so I was able to, you know, do it online and get it sorted. But Neil, perhaps explain to us that step, because I think that's the one that so many of us trip over. Uh, I mean, even in subsequent properties, I now know I always just brief uh, the attorneys that just make sure that this part gets sorted. I don't want to have to do with this. I have somebody on the team just handle the admin uh, because that's the step that you don't want to trip over and subsequently find yourself falling behind in, in rates and taxes. I mean, it can be, it can be very frustrating uh, yeah. dealing with that part of the admin. Uh, some attorneys uh, will assist, uh, will assist the, the, the parties in changing their account. And there are certain agencies out there that, uh, that people can help. But, you know, my experience with some of the uh, municipalities is that they've got customer care centers. They're very, very easy to go to. Typically, what would happen, just to go back a little step in the process, um, during the property process, the conveyancing attorneys would call for clearance figures from the municipality on the seller's account. The seller's required to make payment of those clearance figures, which are generated in advance. In other words, the property transfer, when, when it's registered, that account should still be in credit at the time that the purchaser becomes the owner of the property. On the day of registration, the attorney should send out a final letter of registration to all of the parties. And typically, the purchaser will receive a letter to say, you are the owner, and here's proof that you're the owner. They'll receive a property printout to show that the property is in their name. Um, and they'll be able to take that off, off to the municipality and go to the customer care center and open an account in their name. The seller, of course, also needs to make sure that the account is closed on their side um, so, that, uh, so that there's a transition. And once that's taken place, um, uh, usually the seller will get a refund. If, if there's still a credit on the account, they'll open an account in the purchaser's name and the seller should get a refund uh, for the amount that they've paid that's, that's in credit after the date that it's gone into, um, that it's been registered in the purchaser's name.
Mm. We are slowly wrapping up the last live show of 2021 here on the Private Property Podcast. And as I said, if we do not get somebody claiming the money that is in the money bag, I'm going to give it to one lucky viewer who's watching us and commenting down here below. So the trick there is certainly to be engaging us down here below. I've asked the team to look up for who's engaging us the most this evening and that 1,000 rand is going to be yours. So on the one hand, you have to keep your fingers crossed that Ule Bukhan doesn't, uh, you know, uh, certainly claim the prize before we wrap up. And on the other, continue engaging and it may you may be the lucky winner. And Neil, before we wrap up though, you know, going into the new year, what are some common legal mistakes that we need to avoid when it comes to buying a home uh, in 2022 and beyond, of course? Look, I think the biggest uh, problem, especially for first-time home buyers, is affordability um you know home buyers they don't do their homework and and i i think uh you know it's one thing pre-qualifying but it's another thing looking at uh at you know, all of these hidden costs and uh you know especially complexes things like special levies um you know uh, transfer costs bond costs and i find a lot of people obviously not doing their homework and now finding that that that, that becomes a problem and one of the biggest issues as well especially this time of year um, and I've experienced this before, is that buyers are, are, are granted a home loan and um, the bond is granted and the transfer uh, commences, the transfer process commences. But obviously before it's registered, before the end of the new year, we go into the Christmas period, we go into the festive season and, and some people then go and take out additional credit. And, uh, you know, obviously when a time comes to register the transfer, the bank goes and does a double check and if they realize that the buyer has now overextended himself during the period that he's been granted a bond uh, to the period of registration, the bank has the, has the right not to register that bond and they can actually withdraw uh, from the process. So I've found it before where, where particularly over the festive season, people take out loans, they take out uh, additional cell phone contracts, they take out short-term loans to go on holiday, to buy Christmas presents, and that can have a huge, big impact. Uh, on their affordability uh, in terms of their bond, and the bank will pick that up prior to registration. So that's that's a very big problem. Neil, we've got a question here, and I'm going to just... It's coming from Musapa Mkhubudu on our Facebook page, and he asks, does the purchaser pay for the new municipal account? I'm going to assume he means pay for it to be opened, um, as opposed to you're now servicing it monthly, because, of course, as the purchaser, you would be... So the one who now services it once the property is registered. So yeah, are there any cost implications to uh, you know, getting that new municipal account? Absolutely. Uh, the purchaser, from the date of registration, the purchaser would be responsible for that account. Um, there will be a, a costs associated with opening that account. There's a deposit that would be required at the, at the council, and they, they will require a, de a deposit up front to open the account and put it into your name. And then, of course, uh, from that day forward, the purchaser will be responsible for his own rates and uh, and taxes. If um, the purchaser wanted to go with uh, some sort of an agency or some sort of uh, company that would assist them in opening uh, an account, well, then there would be those fees attached to that as well. Yeah, and I think that's an important one. I mean, we, we, we have seen some who are able to do it fairly quickly, fairly efficiently, and they do charge um, a fee for that. And I think when we then look at, uh, as we wrap up this evening, Neil, any tips, certainly any advice for property owners going into the new year, uh, especially those who also may be looking to expand their property portfolio, perhaps adding their first rental um, you know, property in their property portfolio? So I think from a, from a seller's perspective, um, I think, you know, before, if you're planning on listing your property for sale, make sure that you've covered all of the areas of your property and that when you do sign that contract, you, you list all of the defects. Um, and if there are, you know, repairs that need to be made, like leaking roofs, uh, latent defects, cracked tiles, you know, uh, rising damp, don't don't do patch jobs. Make sure that it's that it's done properly with with a reputable contractor, um, so that the guarantee for for that uh, uh, service can be passed over to the purchaser. Um, so from that perspective, from from a buyer's perspective, I think you know, COVID is is playing a big part in our lives. Hopefully, we've seen the end of COVID, 
Um, and I think just again, from an affordability point of view, you know, make sure that you've done your homework uh, and make sure that you can afford the property and look out for those hidden, hidden costs. Uh, you know, the buyer needs to realize that they're going to pay transfer costs. They may be paying transfer duty. And if they're registering a bond, they're going to be paying uh, fees for the registration of the bond as well. Mm. And, you know, Neil, as we wrap up, we actually mentioned something around when you're a seller, make sure that you don't cut corners in the event where there are any damages to the property. You want to make sure that you disclose them. Perhaps as we wrap up, what are some home buyers' rights? Because I think sometimes uh, buyers tend to not know their rights, especially first-time home buyers, uh, and it's very easy for them to get very intimidated and very overwhelmed with the process. And sometimes working with an estate agent who wants a sell because uh, you're looking at their commission and would you know position things as though this is how things are done uh, as opposed to you know essentially being open with them saying actually as a buyer you're able to you know ask for xyz so, I, mean, I think you know first and foremost um you know buyer is entitled to inspect his property um entitled to a to a full inspection of the property make sure that they're satisfied uh, with the state of the property and if there are any latent defects uh, with the property if the seller is aware of any problems with the property uh, the buyer is entitled to um to to be disclosed you know, to have those problems disclosed to the buyer um of course if if the seller is not aware of those defects then of course you know uh, he would be entitled to rely on the so-called footstool clause um but i think from that perspective uh you know the, the the buyer is entitled to know exactly what he's buying the other thing that uh, buyers can expect to, to have in terms of their rights is vacant occupation, which appears to be a big thing these days. Um, a lot of the times, and it's particularly in this market, there's a lot of sellers that are selling their properties that they've bought for investment purposes. And um, where they've agreed with the purchaser that they have a tenant and the tenant uh, will have vacated the property by the time registration takes place, I think the buyers uh, find themselves in a situation where they They've now taken transfer, they want to move into the property and the tenant is still vacating the property. So uh, a buyer definitely has the right to vacant occupation on registration if that's what they've agreed. Um, and, and of course, uh, to make sure that, that, uh, that they can safely move into their property. And Neil, I think as we wrap up with this conversation this evening, uh, I want to say any final last tips for our viewers at home, uh, you know, when it comes to buying their properties for 2022, whether they're the buyer themselves or the seller, or of course, even tenants who want to move from now becoming, uh, from moving from being a tenant and certainly uh, owning their property. Any final tips as we wrap up this show this evening? Dama, I think... Uh is, you know, there's a lot of uh, um, movement in the market in terms of sectional title and complex living. And I found a lot of people uh, moving into complexes uh, where the complex has, has now got a whole lot of hidden uh, aspects. And one of the issues is when you inspect your home, when you move into a property, when you plan on buying a property, check the complex, check the state of the complex, check the financials of the body corporate, make sure that it's, uh, that, uh, that it's liquid. Uh, and check that uh, you know check what you're buying so that there's no hidden agenda down the line in terms of special levies and that type of thing. Neil, we're going to leave it there this evening. Thank you so much for joining us on our last live episode of the Private Property Podcast. It's been such a pleasure to have you. I know that we'll certainly be inviting you back in the new year, tackling all things relating to property. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thanks for having me, Zama. And that is Neil McKinnon, who's an attorney at Hammond Paul Attorneys, wrapping up the last live show of the Private Property Podcast with myself, Uzaman Dungwa Kumalo, this 2021. Tomorrow, we've got a special episode for you at home. This is one that you do not want to miss. It's probably one of the greatest shows that we have pulled off this year. We had a lot of fun uh, last week when we were putting it together and certainly going to enjoy watching it with you all. Uh, same time, we're going to have quite a lot of fun. But before I go, I want to to say a few thank yous of course firstly thank you to all of you at home who have continued to watch us every single weekday at 7 p.m and also watch the 8 p.m shows who engage with us share the content and continue showing us some love we do not take all that love for granted and certainly do not take your time and attention for granted we have become a family and we're in your homes every single weekday you share your hopes and aspirations with us and it's something that's so inspiring to watch uh, it's even more inspiring uh, to see all of 
of you reach your property goals and make some of your property milestones and of course share them with us on our uh, social media pages and a very very big thank you to the team behind the scenes uh, who pull this off every single day it's not very easy uh, putting together a property show but we have grown to not only be the only daily property show in southern africa we also the only one that has reached over 400 shows on the continent and this is something that we know we wouldn't have done without you at home but also without uh, you know the great team that works behind the scenes in putting the show together from you know my colleague Abiola, uh, Amo Palesa, uh, Norma, there's so many of them, uh, Kizito, Tavile uh, and a whole host of others guys also there doing a lot of our graphics and I think this is something that we do not take for granted at all. Buche was also on your socials and always commenting uh, you know from the social media teams from Fundo and her team. This is something that I know uh, a lot of us spend a lot of time working towards and uh, lots of sleepless nights and sometimes we don't always get it right but as a team we certainly want to make sure that we give you the best that we can on offer and thank you to each and every single one of you and this festive season is around off and certainly get ready for 2022 we've got a lot planned for the new year you can certainly look forward to a new look for the show uh, we've got a few surprises uh, up our sleeves and that's something that i'm very excited about and i know you at home are going to absolutely love some of those surprises so i can already assure you that 2022 is going to be bigger than what we have done so far and we weren't going to get there of course without you at home so thank you to each and every single one of you for pulling this off for us and making sure that uh, we certainly grow from strength to strength now i did say if the lucky winner does not claim their prize we're going to uh, have a lucky winner chosen from the show and the lucky winner who is watching and commenting uh, the team has told me is tashi combs so congratulations to you tashi combs a thousand rands coming your way uh, this evening and that is the last time that we're doing that this evening on the show uh, we're going to be coming back in the new year with of course loads and loads of great prizes as we often do well for myself as a man it has been such an honor uh, to always be with you every single weekday here and making your property aspirations come true and certainly helping you make better property decisions i am very grateful for the opportunity and we're going to be coming back in the new year we hope you're going to have a very safe festive season that you're going to be able to spend time with your family, uh, be able to rest. I know many of us are still going to be sending kind regards emails uh, for, the for, for the foreseeable future, but we're going to be wrapping it up and hopefully getting some rest. Well, that's it for myself. And of course, as usual, hoping you're staying home and staying safe.